Hello, welcome to the introduction for assignment two um, for the Java unit. This is a new version of Tech Jobs. It's the object oriented edition where you are going to continue to display job listings for the company team at Launch Code, um, but you're going to do it um, using uh, objects of classes to um, put the data together and you know present them one job at a time. Uh, using these uh, objects of the job class. And they uh, have some code in here for you that you'll be able to run eventually once you have everything up and working to kind of see the jobs listed out, but it's commented out in the main class for now. Um, so let's talk about what you are going to do. You are going to, uh, you know, understand the code that's been written. There are a number of things that have been updated here that are already prepared for you. Uh, to make, sh make sure you read through all the code and understand it well, you're going to uh, work with these objects that are encapsulating data and methods in each of these classes. You're going to um, practice some test-driven development and write some unit tests. And you'll also uh, streamline some of your code at the very end using inheritance with an abstract class. Uh, so there's a number of uh, different things to kind of work through one at a time. You can get the starter code from Canvas, um, and th there will be a link in the Canvas assignment for the particular uh, repo that you're meant to clone. Once you have that on your local computer, you can get it up in IntelliJ and take a look. So there is a job class um, here, and you'll see that it already has some fields. It's got uh, an ID, a static next ID, so that every single new job will have a new ID number. Um, once you uh, make it possible for it to do that. And then it's got five fields here, a string name, but then these other four you'll notice are actually instances of other classes. So you're composing um, one class uh, with objects from other classes. So this is uh, great because that means that the employer, the location, the position type, and the core competency will be represented by objects, and then they store the strings that hold those uh, you know, values for each four of those. And if you go over and look, you can see um, these have been set up. They are gonna look very similar, but different ones have different to-dos because there's some things you need to do to finish them. We'll take a look at that in just a second. Um, the other file that you're gonna be working in is the job test file that's down here in the test folder. Um, where you're going to write some unit tests for um, some of the tasks later on um, in tasks four and five. So let's go ahead, uh, just look at this first. Um, they, uh, you know, they talk a little bit about these job fields here in the introduction. And one thing that I definitely want to uh, point out, this is important. When you want to access the string of, you know, the name of the employer, or maybe it's the, you know, position type or the core competency that is stored in the uh, object of that class, but you're referencing it from the job, you have to use the getter for the object first, you know, whether it's the employer or position type or everything, use that getter just to access the object of that class, but then you need another getter to get the value that's going to be the string. So for example, an employer, um, you know, this is it, that's going to access this value right here, right? Um, that's how you get to the actual string. Um, and when you're writing your unit test, that's going to be important because you're going to be need to compare values and you're going to say, okay, I'm expecting this string. I want to compare it against what's actually coming. And so this is how you're going to access that. Um, so keep that in mind, tuck that away, um, because as you're working with um, everything from the job, which is where, you know, you're going to be writing your tests for the job class, not for the individual other classes. You'll want to keep in mind that to access those string values, you've got to go all the way down into the other classes um, to get to those. Okay. Um, so read through this. This kind of explains why it's good to use an object-oriented approach for uh, this kind of a project. And we've got a little bit here about um, running the auto grading test. You can look at that if you'd like. I'm going to sh show you that at the end. Uh, let's move ahead into task one. So task one, um, it says to explore the employer class. There's actually nothing for you to code here. Um, they just want you to understand how one of these other classes is working. So they say, let's you know take a look at employer. If you open it up, you can see it's got all these fields, um, the ID, the next ID, and the value. 
Um, it's got two constructors, um, one that just sets the value and updates the static value for the next object, and one that calls that to make sure the, the, the ID gets set, but then it also sets the value. It's got a custom to string that uh, makes sure that it'll just return that value um, as a string instead of uh, you know, giving you some sort of location in memory or something. Um, an override, uh, override on the equals and hash code methods. Um, this equals makes sure that it's uh, tested on its basis of its ID. And then um, getters and setters. You have just a getter for the ID, but you have both a getter and a setter for the value. So everything you need for this class is already here. That's good to understand because um, after looking through this and understanding it, your second task is to finish out the other support classes, location, core competency, and position type. So if you go to each of those, um, location tells you there's a to-do for you to um, you know, finish this by adding the second constructor. If you go to position type, it's got the to do's that tells you, you know, we, we need to add the custom to string and the custom equals and hash code methods. Um, if you go to core competency, it tells you down here, we need uh, use the generate tool in IntelliJ to add a getter and setter for value and add a getter for the ID field. So uh, you'll need to kind of, you know, finish each of these uh, different things in, in different ones but ultimately use employer as a guide because they all should end up pretty much being exactly the same thing in the end. Um, make good use of IntelliJ's generator for these things that will make it go faster um, and more accurate, but make sure that it is doing exactly what it's supposed to do. Um, so once you've gone through and done what they've asked you to do for these three, that's the end of task two. You can save and commit and push your work. Um, then it's on task three. So this is where the job class needs to be completed. You may remember when we looked at this that all that was here was the fields. There's no constructors, no equals and hash code methods. There's no getters or setters. So they wa um, walk you through these. And you may say, well, what about the, the two string method? Don't we want a two string method so we can display these jobs you know, really nicely with all their information? And you are absolutely correct. Yes, you do. However, that's not until task five. So there's no to-do here for that because these three to-dos are just to do with task three. So make sure you do all three of these for now and just don't worry about the two-string method yet. Um, that's coming, but that will take care of this. You'll have those constructors done. You'll have the getters and setters done. You'll have the equals and hash code methods done. And then the job class will be almost complete, everything except for overriding the two-string method. Um, so before you do that, task four will have you go and um, create a run configuration for job test, which, um, you know, this is one way to do this. Um, they walk you through it. Um, I will say that this uh, points you here to techjobs slash OO dot test. There is no such test uh, directory there or package. Um, you'll notice that the test files are directly in org.launchcode.checkjobs.oo um, and same for the classes. So um, this is slightly different than what you're actually going to find. But the point is you want to ultimately, you know, um, set the configuration to point to that job test file that's right there um, in this folder. And um, it doesn't actually have any tests in it yet. If you look at it, it's empty, which is okay. Um, but you'll have it there and then you'll be able to run those tests. And then um, they want you to write some tests, uh, first testing the empty constructor, which is you know, just making sure that when you um, create a job, your first constructor gets run and it can create um, something with an ID, even if it doesn't have uh, any of the other values in it yet. Um, and so that's the first test there, test setting job ID. Your second one is to test the constructor. So you can name the test, test job constructor sets all fields and make sure it's setting everything. They give you some data here um, to start out with, uh, to give you some test data. And um, they want you to use both assert true and assert equals to test two different things. Um, one is make sure that uh, the class is correct. Remember the instance of will let you test to see what, uh, what, what instance what class an object is um, of. 
And so you can do that with assert true. You can use assert equals to check the value of each of those fields. Um, and so you should ultimately have 10 assertions, uh, five uh, with this one and five with this one. Um, and then uh, let's see, the equals method will be the third thing that you test here um, to make sure that the uh, jobs are being um, tested on the basis of their ID to, to decide if they're actually equal or not. So they walk you through that. So once you've done those uh, three tests, that's it for task four. Then, um, you know, and that's just for things that you have already written. So you're writing the tests after the fact, just to test the code you've written. But then you wanna do a little TDD in ta task five. And this is where you're gonna write that two string method. This is uh, back in, you know, in the job class, I wanna clarify something here. Um, it's talking about you know passing a job object. That's not strictly what's happening. Um, two string is being coded inside the job class, which means it has access to all of the fields and methods of the job class. You're not actually passing anything in. It doesn't take any um, arguments. So um, really, but it does return a string and it should look like this ultimately, but they want you to test this in four parts and they want you to code it in four parts so that you are able to practice test-driven development by writing the test and then writing the code that satisfies the test and to do that one bit at a time. So the very first test is really just gonna be making sure that you have a blank line at the beginning and the end. And they want you to use this uh, system.line separator to create that um, new line uh, character essentially is what's gonna happen. So essentially what you're gonna be saying is, I wanna test that the very first character of what comes back from two string um, should be one of these and the very last character should be one of these. So that would be, a, a, you can write a test that just looks for that and it doesn't even matter what's in between them yet because you're not gonna do that until part two. So um, I would recommend storing this in a uh, variable that you can use over and over again because you're gonna need that line break, that new line, not just at the beginning and the end but also after every single one of these. Um, for, for, for test two, when you get to that part. Uh, so that, that might be one approach that you could take. So write that test. Uh, they give you the name for that test. Let's see, I had, I had trouble finding it the first time. Yeah, right here. They forgot to put it in green like they do the other ones, so it's harder to see, but uh, call your first test. Test to string starts and ends with new line. Yeah. And then um, once you've done that one, you can move on to the second one, which tells you that you should have all these lines with um, the label, a colon, a space, and then um, the value after that. So you're gonna have the ID, the name, and then the employer location, position type, and core competency, six lines in total. Um, they each should print on separate lines and um, they should have the real values that you're pulling from uh, each of these fields. Okay, so um, that's the second test, making sure that works with real data. The third one is um, to take things step for, a step further and make it possible to have something other than the data. What if you don't have an employer? What if that string is just an empty string or the employer object was never set in in the first place? Um, you need to display data not available uh, instead after, you know, in the place of these blanks. So um, you'll need to write that code to satisfy, you'll write the test and then, uh, and then make sure the code is caught up to make it pass. And then the fourth one's optional, but this is a, a really good idea. Um, if let's say you only have an ID because the, only the first constructor was ever called and you never passed in the, the values for the other five and set all of those, uh, instead of returning this entire thing, you could instead return, oops, this job does not seem to exist. So you can write a test for that, and then you can go and modify your code to make that happen and pass the test. That would be the fourth test. Um, so uh, yeah, here's the, the correct labels and data. Um, here's the test for the third requirement um, where you have an, a single empty field. And then if you want to do that fourth one, um, you can name that something, you know, that makes sense uh, as well. And then you would actually have four tests and not three. So if you do all of that, um, you will uh, be in good shape. And um, you also 
uh, ultimately are going to run the auto grading test and that will double check that you've done it right. Uh, but getting your own test to pass the way you've written your test is the first step. <laughs> Um, okay, so once you've done all of that, the next task is to come over to uh, refactor your uh, support classes um, by taking all of that duplicated code, because they are almost identical, right? Location, employer, position type, core competency, they have almost the exact same code. They will by the time you're done. So they suggest that you create an abstract class called job field and move all the things that the four classes have in common into that so that they can just inherit it from it. You can extend this class. And then the only thing that they're gonna need is their own constructor that just calls the um, parent constructor to set the values. Um, so you can follow the instructions here to work through that, um, clean all of that up, uh, and then you should be in good state shape to uh, test everything and you can run all of your tests. So um, I'm gonna move over here to main um, and then I'm gonna come down here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna demonstrate for you uh, what this is gonna look like once you have your solution done. So let me switch into my solution branch here. Um, oh, idea workspace. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna stash that. Okay, let's do it again. Okay, so um, let's say that I wanted to go ahead and run this. And I, I did add a fourth job here that was um, an example of what happens when you don't uh, use the other constructor and you don't give it any other information because I did do that fourth optional part where I provided for a completely different uh, display for that two string method. Um, so I've added all of those to the array list and now it's gonna print them out. So I'm gonna run this um, from main and um, this is what it should look like once you have everything up and running properly. Um, good, so you see um, each of these printed on a separate line like they're supposed to here, where um, they, and they have a, you know, a new line before and a new line after. You'll notice that job number three um, has you know, an empty string here on employer, so we got that data not available instead of having a value there or just a blank. And then this one um, for job number four, it printed out, oops, this job does not seem to exist. So this is what you're going for, but your tests should be the one to make sure this is working right. But this is an alternate way to run it, um, to see what it looks like, uh, just to run it directly from main if you'd like to. Now, when you're ready to run all of your tests, um, like I can come over to, without showing it to you, I can run just job test. And we'll see that all my tests pass, so that's that's good. But if I want to run all of the tests, uh, not just the tests I wrote in job tests, but also the tests that Launch Code wrote as part of the auto grading features they added that are you know useful for you and for your TA when you're doing your demo, um, you can come in here, right click on this, and then come down and say run tests in you know this directory, and it'll run everything. And so if you know 44 of 44 tests have passed. Um, you're in good shape. Um, that's what you're going for. Uh, and then you'll know that um, everything is, is good to go. So um, make sure you are taking advantage of your TAs um, with their office hours and uh, when you have time with them in, in studio time to, you know, pick their brains, have them take a look at your code when you get really stuck or you're really just super confused about something. Um, get get them uh, in there for a second set of eyes to keep you moving forward um, and you will get yourself to the finish line and then you can schedule that demo and check this one off the list. All right, I hope this has been helpful and I will see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.